What's up, Rockstars? Today I have a huge update for you. I have the next big game coming up, and we're talking well over 12,000 people are waiting for this thing, and you could be one of them. So super stoked about that because a review's coming soon, so I'll be talking about that. I'll be talking about what's currently online right now. There is some big name ones that just have not delivered, but are still kind of working. We're discussed that. Of course, we're also going to be discussing Mythic Games and Anisteer. It has been deactivated on Kickstarter. What does that mean? We're going to be talking through all of that, and of course, plenty more, so stay tuned. Hey, Future KOA here, just to let you know that coming up there's even more stuff. That's right, I have a brand new game I've never covered before that both looks amazing and scary at the same time. If you like anime, if you like Grim Dark, a KDM style looking kind of thing maybe, then you might want to pay attention to this. Additionally, there's a Darkest Dungeon update and a Six Siege update. I'll be talking about that and how you probably owe more money. We'll talk about that, of course. A Subterra 2 update and a special ask at the very end. Now, before we dive into all that stuff, a huge shout out to my sponsor, Into the AM. They make amazing shirts just like this. Guys, I get compliments all the time on this. Just the other day, I walked out there wearing one of my Into the AM shirts, pick up my son from the school bus, and the school bus driver was even like, hey, nice shirt. Seriously, you get it all the time. They fit nice. They feel nice. They're great quality. They look fantastic. And you can get them for as low as $5 right now, that's right. And of course, linked down in the description below, you can also receive 10% off any sale they have, an extra 10% off. You're welcome for that, that is a code you get just for me, so hope you enjoy that. And guys, some of their new stuff is amazing. I'm not gonna spend forever on this. You guys can see the quality. Guys, look at that Fallen King tea. I'm getting that one, you better believe it. My goodness, just great stuff, guys. Seriously, check it out, highly, highly recommended. And uh, yeah, with that, let's go ahead and jump into things. First of all, support the Dice Tower 2023. 69 hours left, so last minute, guys. Now, this is at time of recording, which means you have like very, very little time now because I'm actually recording this a little bit ahead of time because it's really late. I'm not going to stay up till 4 a.m. I got a, a, a big meeting at 9.30, so I, I got to like get some sleep at some point here. So I'm recording this edit it later, but you can still get in on this, guys. It is linked down below, along with everything else in that description, plus a ton more. There are, well, there are like well over 50 links down there. Seriously, it's a ton. So go ahead and check that out. That's in the description below. The Dice Tower, this is their season. I don't even think they do seasons anymore. What season would this be? Let's try and find out. I don't know. They used to call them seasons. Um, it's for 2023. The last season they called was 12. Okay, but then they went to 18. I'm not going to do the math. Whatever. It's 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 something. Guys, just, uh, you know, a lot of these creators do a lot when it comes to covering board games and the board game industry. And uh, Dice are one of the first to re start reviewing these things. And so if you find their content helpful, feel free to uh, get some promo packs and stuff. You can actually get all sorts of stuff. They're like selling all sorts of stuff on here. So feel free to check that out. Or perhaps if you like my channel or you find what I do beneficial, want to help support another year of that, then link down below is my fundraiser as well. We're almost at 10,000 guys. So I really do appreciate it. That's incredible. And that means soon I'll be able to add, it's actually three plus now, three plus games to the pool. So you guys can get games as a thank you gift because I don't want you guys to leave empty handed which is why almost all of you will be getting this I'll be printing these out and sending these out these little commemorative coins so you'll get that and additionally for $100 backers I have something specifically planned for you guys it's going to be huge oh it'll be a whole separate announcement it's going to be awesome though trust me I'm super pumped about it and I want to just dive into this more and more each year so that you guys get something in return that's the whole point but seriously some of these games huge huge so definitely happy to send these out to you guys i really really am so feel free to check that out again link down description below now batman escape from Arkham asylum this was massive if you recall there was like tens of thousands of people signed up for this and yet 1673 backers came and actually like backed it so why the difference right what happened well i think a lot of it was just people looking at pictures, right? Looking at these beautiful minis, which they do look very nice, but not really the gameplay. Another part is I, that Night Games or Night Models is not very good at 
running a business. And what I mean by that is selling their product, which is like the core of the business, right? It looks like they do some really great work. This essentially looks like Nemesis Batman edition. Um, that's a gross over uh, simplification of it, but it's kind of like that, if that makes sense. And you actually even kind of see that in the board. Let me see if I can show you that board again. Um, it it, it kind of gives those vibes out. Where the heck is that board? Right here, right? So you got the you got the hallways and you got the the places, uh, the actual like rooms that you go to and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> and then of course that would make Batman the alien queen, right? <laughs> so as you spawn guys and you're trying to avoid them and whatnot. So again, very kind of similar to that with a Batman flavor, but obviously there's a lot of differences in the actual gameplay itself, not just at high level, but either way, they haven't sold it well. And what I mean by that is if you like scroll down here, you're going to see a lot of like great high quality stuff but you're going to see one let's play video um and this is like two and a half three hours long and then you're going to see one kind of review it's listed under reviews and it's not in english so i have no idea what they say but you'll have this one as well where it's kind of a, a discussion kind of thing on it by from what i can tell again i, I don't know but you know, so they're not very good at that part of it. Additionally, it is kind of expensive. My understanding is the quality of the minis is definitely higher. And I mean, I, I guess we'll see. And therefore, you know, that kind of ups it as well. But honestly, I didn't think it was too bad. I mean, you don't get a lot of miniature spam, but you do get a fair amount of very complex, very unique sculpts. So assuming that the actual minis come out looking this good, it's actually not too bad. So I went ahead and grabbed this from the first 24 hours. Obviously, by the time you're seeing this, it is too late. I do apologize for that um, to get this for free. But that means you get this for free. And then you also gained, if you followed this uh, patient character skin for Bane as well for free, which is kind of nice. Um, I believe, let's see, this, you don't want this mastermind unless you do want the all-in. That means you get sleeves and extra dice and dice towers, stuff like that. But if you do the superhero villain pledge, it's about 200 bucks. And then you can add, if you want the uh requested arkham asylum for another 4343 um which you don't necessarily need it's essentially another play mode what that one does gosh gonna do all this scroll past these beautiful minis my goodness okay is um right here it allows you to play essentially as the good guys in like a solo mode play as batman and defeat the bad guys before they escape from arkham asylum so it kind of turns it on its head i think that's super cool i personally almost always avoid alternate play styles i find that every single one i have ever played typically typically as long as it's literally kind of like this like oh hey here's another way of doing it um not very good. There are some exceptions for like Tenaris is right behind me. That unboxing will be coming soon for the rest of the stuff there. But Arena had a story mode and a PvP mode, but they, it was very much marketed as a dual system thing like that, and they didn't really use any different rules. This looks like it would change the rules a lot when it comes to being able to play this way. If you're a solo player, definitely go for it. I would say this is definitely something you'd want. But uh, personally, I tend to avoid it. The expansion, by the way, they didn't show these off, so I wanted to show these off. Again, these minis are incredible. They are really, really well designed. Now, again, how they'll end up, I'll let you guys know because I did back it, but my goodness, and I don't really like this. I don't like the fact that you just changed the color on one, and that's now a new mini. It's probably the only instance I've seen of that, too. Everything else, it seems to be fairly, fairly unique when it comes to doing all that stuff. So, you know, whatever, whatever, I guess. Anyway... Yeah, great stuff, great stuff, but kind of pricey. We'll see. I think a lot of it is uh, stretch goals, too. I think they took a lot out. They're like, Hush is coming. They have the eraser. They have, like, the B-list characters or C-list characters. This is like um, the Marvel United I'll be, I'll be showing in just a little bit. Like, you have Kite Man <laughs> that you can play as, which is pretty cool. I dig that. You got multiple versions of Harley Quinn. You got Polka Dot Man. You got Condiment King, right? Along with some you know, like big names too, like Mr. Freeze and whatnot. But anyway, that's that. We'll see how it ends up, but definitely not the uh, amount of people that it could have been. And like, this goes to show that even if you try and like, uh, it, even if you try to inflate the people signed up, if it's an artificial inflation, like, hey, I'm I barely interested in this, but I can get a free thing if I follow it, so I'll follow it. it it's not quite as good, right? You definitely want a very targeted and very accurate kind of gauge of interest and uh so I, I i don't know if like getting a free mini i don't think really makes people then back for 150 dollars if that makes sense i'm not sure you're actually gaining sales through that 
So it, it almost kind of bites you in the butt a little bit. I don't know. It, it, it's, it's hard to solve that, but that's my two cents on that. Guys, a lot of you guys love to spend extra money and also hate storage. And if so, season four of Sleeve Kings is here. Um, this is obviously going to be quite big for a lot of you. I know a lot of you guys really, really, really love this stuff. Um, I personally love sleeving stuff like my magic decks where I shuffle them all the time and stuff like that. Board games, typically not. Typically I like the box to actually store the stuff and rarely do they ever support sleeved cards. Adds to the price, of course. And often, uh, board games specifically will have like a very big deck. And so when you sleeve it, it then becomes uh, unwieldy. You almost have to like break up the deck or whatever. Well, card games often, they keep the deck a little small so you can sleeve it safely. So it depends. I'm very picky on what I would and would not sleeve. Uh, for instance, I sleeved the DC deck building game because, again, it's a, it's a card game. So it tends to work pretty well for that. And you shuffle all the time. Marvel United... Here is the Marvel version of the C-list character stuff. So if you want Captain Britain, you got this, guys. Captain Britain to the rescue. This, by the way, did break a million. They're not all come on projects break a million these days. So that is definitely something. 11,700 of batch so far, and there's still 14 days to go. The previous one was the X-Men, and it got about 25,000. And then the first one got about 21,000. So we're I'll be watching how many backers actually come for this one. And I suspect it'll be a little bit less. Not because it's the third. I think it's because of the characters there. Just, I mean, as much as I appreciate the fun characters, right? These, like, ridiculous characters that you typically don't hear a lot of. Or you have to be, like, a big comic book fan or whatever. But they're all... I, they tend to be designed pretty wild and crazy. Like Cyborg Spider-Man, right? Um... It, it just doesn't have the draw as, like, an Iron Man. There's just, You can't compete against that. It, there's no... There's no competing against that. But these look great. I think the minis look awesome for sure. Uh, I think it's... And some of these, like like Dark Child, uh, Dakin, he's a great villain. Um, so there's a lot that I actually recognize here that's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> this guy looks silly. So, yeah. I mean, they've added a lot of ex uh, expansions. I told you what, they're already over 300. So what you can do... Uh, $100, and then you can do another 35 That's 70 right there. That's 90 So that's another $105 to your 100 So you're at 205 So you're not quite at 300 yet, but you are at 205 with still two weeks to go. So I expect at least two more, I would think. Probably two more 35s at the very least. I mean, I, we'll see, I guess. But um, yeah, that, I mean, that's how this, this the price keeps raising, right? It's not really that they're gaining too many backers right now. It's that those backers are spending more and more and more. And that typically when these long campaigns happen, that's the only way. That's the only way really to do it. Um, if you're raising without that, then that means you you goofed up and didn't reach enough people at the start uh, because then they didn't know about it. <laughs> that's typically what that means. Deep Shelf relaunched. I want to give them a shout out because they are so close to funding. I bet by the time you guys are seeing this, it has funded. Oh, actually, boom. Look at that. Congratulations. You funded by the time I opened up tabs to record. So there you go. Deep Shelf, the relaunch has funded. So again, feel free to check that out. It's pretty cool. It does have some minis. You're like moving around these underwater things and like moving resources around and stuff. It actually looks pretty cool. In my opinion, it would definitely be a game that I would play and probably enjoy quite a bit. After that, we have Once Upon a Line, The Butterfly's Breath. Now, this is um, posting itself as the first scratch-off adventure game. Um, it, it looks very, very cool, and it, it's essentially like a, a, a lotto system, right, where you're scratching off like like with a, a, a coin or something like that. Um, so it's kind of like a, a, a reveal, and you're using these little pieces to, like, see what you can do and there's traps that you can go into and all that a huge story that they advertise like 33,000 words or something like that so a, a very nice dense story that you get to kind of deal with there you do get a free deluxe metal uh scratcher if you do back it now so that's pretty cool and they do offer recharge packs so obviously once you scratch it it's done it's permanent so you get that kind of permanence but you can still buy new packs if you want to. I didn't actually catch how expensive those are, but they shouldn't be too bad. They're just sheets, so it's not. It's it's just like that, right? It's not 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 terrible. It looks very pretty. I think it's awesome. The art style looks great. Um, definitely, definitely kind of interesting. I would totally play somebody else's copy. I can't destroy game components, so that's that's not a thing I can do. So I can't do that with my copy. I'll do it with somebody else's. Hero Realms Dungeon. I wanted to share this. It's a card game 
because it has some of the best art I've seen in a while. Now, it, I don't feel like it necessarily looks like it from here, but when you see the cards, and I think a lot of it's just the UI on the cards, I really dig the look of this. The, the Just the look and feel of this, um, something about it just looks great to me, like fantastic. Looks really good. The art scene's very consistent too. I don't know if they only have one artist. If it's multiple, they are they are like around the same style quite quite well. Like very, very good. But I love literally I, I I'm not disliking any of these. These look fantastic to me. Like I would love a magic card deck to look like this. This uh, it looks great. I think it really does. So yeah, feel free to check that out. That just looks freaking nice. And it's like at almost 300,000, almost 2,000 backers. So it's doing quite well. Okay, The Curse of Candelabria, if you recall, this was canceled. It didn't fund very well. This is done by Lunarx Studio. They did Sheol. They definitely do these very strongly thematic, unique looking games. This one actually was a lot of fun. I did a review for it actually and quite enjoyed it. My son very much enjoyed it as well. So that's great. Anytime he's having a good time, typically the whole table has a good time. He, he tends to um, emanate his feelings positive and negative. <laughs> he, he's 16. He does it very well. But uh, yeah, definitely fun. This though, I wanted to show, there's actually two of them here. You can show this one. Let's zoom into that. My goodness, so small. Oh, where are you? Um, before what they had, I'll oh, see, I hate stupid chrome. Um, before what they had was a little candlestick, right? That would kind of like melt down as it got there. And that worked great, by the way. In game, it just, it, it worked fine. You could, at a glance, see exactly where everything was. But it, it was kind of wobbly and kind of generic and stuff like that. Now, now you have these candle holders that hold different flames. And the amount of flames it has depends on, you know, how essentially how uh, burnt it is. Super cool idea, I think. And a lot, uh, very smart of them to do. And I think that'll honestly help a lot. I mean, as much as we like to think that we're smart consumers, that we're, we're all intelligent and we're making great decisions, minis sell, guys. Minis look great. Minis are fun. Uh, everybody loves the minis. So if you don't, you're probably watching the wrong channel. <laughs> So yeah, very cool. I, I I dig it. I think that's a great idea and I, I wish them the best of luck for that. I don't know what else they're changing, but I do know that Stone Saga has 12,653 followers now. And I think, I think, I believe that it's going to be a strong correlation between that and actual backers. We'll see. Will it be like another Batman? I don't know. But I will be doing a review for this. It is very tight, but I will get some games in, I promise. I move on February 2nd, so you guys will see a change in the background here extremely soon as I I have to box this up at some point, guys. Okay, so I'm going to have just Stone Saga out, and we're going to be playing that. And then I'll probably actually, if I can, do the review in the new place. It'll be the first review you guys get in the new place. So uh, dedicated game room. I'm even working on getting a dedicated game table. It's going to be awesome, guys. Super excited to share with you. And uh, yeah, that, this looks like an awesome game, guys. Crafting, survival, uh, kind of a, um, a roguelike aspect to it. Sounds super cool. I love all of those words. It sounds great. Okay, next up, Cyber Odyssey. Guys, the reason I'm sharing this is because I don't know if you knew this or not, but they've been working on this a lot, and they continue to share like multiple updates a month, which is, I think, also super cool. They actually did send me an updated version, so I'll be doing an unboxing, and, and uh, I'll get some play in with that because I know I really liked the first one. It played very smoothly and actually quite quickly, too. Um, you know, a lot of the games I play can, can last a while, so it was kind of nice just to sit down and hack a few things and kind of, you know, shoot some people and be done. So anyway, that'll be showing up on the channel as well here soon. But let's go ahead and talk about Anastir because, guys, deactivated by Kickstarter. Deactivated by Kickstarter. Look, at this, it's all black. You got to, like, like highlight. Like, you can still see it there, but it's like... And, and like, you can't even, this doesn't click to anything anymore. It used to, I think, still go to the pledge manager and stuff like that. Nope, not anymore. Now it's just going to essentially explain what deactivated is. I'm going to explain that shortly. But before we get into it, I want to share this. And the reason I want to is because I want to show that there are still people involved. I like to kind of, um, uh, I, I like to yell companies. It's a company. I don't, I don't care about a company. Company doesn't have feelings. But there are people within that company. So when you're interacting with the company, just realize that 
that it is somebody there. It's kind of like being rude to a waiter, in my opinion. Um, I don't think there's really anything you can gain from being rude to the person handling email or handling comments or something like that. Just, I, I guess, I don't know. Be, be nice to people in a service environment, my opinion. Uh, be upset at the at the people making decisions all you want. But the people underneath, give them a break, guys. They're just like you. So anyway, this is Justine. And if you didn't know, she is, I, I believe, a recent hire for them. But she's going to be working on writing updates about the games and stuff like that and handling, you know, comments and whatnot. So I believe she's probably still kind of ramping up and getting used to everything and working on, uh, I'm sure they have a, quite a lot of backlog, but just again, real person. Okay. So like, let's not, <laughs> let's keep that in mind as we discuss this very big problem. So what is deactivated by Kickstarter? Well, if you didn't know, if you didn't know, this is based off of this right here, but it talks about a spotlight, right? And what a spotlight is, is essentially this. So after a campaign is done, you essentially get what's called a spotlight, which has a few different tools. One of them is being able to customize this. And what this allows you to do is link to outside of your thing, like to a pledge manager, you know, when it says like late back now or whatever, that's what that is. They're able to do that. They're able to put a few different uh, like pinned things up on that that you gain after a campaign. And of course, you can still do updates and comments and stuff like that. What this deactivated does is it makes it where you can't essentially you can't link to people like getting your, your stuff anymore, at least not easily here. You can still write updates. You can still respond to comments. But it's essentially their way or Kickstarter's way of starting to try and control companies that don't communicate properly. So if you look under updates on Anastasia, you'll see that they haven't updated since October. Now, Kickstarter actually reached out to Mythic Games. I know this because I contacted Mythic Games before making this video. As always, if I'm covering something negative, I'm gonna be trying to reach out to the actual company in question to be as fair as I can and at least give their side of it, even if I disagree with it. So they reached out to Mythic Games and said, hey, you guys need to like do an update. It's been a while, whatever. They still haven't quite gone that yet. And so they're like, okay, well, here's here's the deactivated. That being said, if you do an update, we will gladly, as, as I was told, um, re-enable re the spotlight for them. So in other words, um, reactivate the uh, campaign page here, as long as you do an update. Uh, they are gonna be doing an update maybe in a week. Uh, so I believe the next one they said was Darkest Dungeon, but then after that they were going to try and do an Anastir one. Now, that was definitely something that they were like, yeah, we should do. And I was like, no, you definitely should. If nothing else, if nothing else, let people know about uh, uh, Justine here and what she's going to be doing for them. Uh, even if it's like, hey, Anastir's on hold, right? Even if that's the case, at least they know, hey, here's the plan, here's that. And it's not on Facebook, right? This is on January 12th. If this had been posted here instead... Um, that it would have been state active and you don't get the bad publicity. You don't get me making a video about it, blah, 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 blah. It would have been a lot better, but, uh, I guess hindsight's 2020. Hopefully this kind of strong arming from Kickstarter actually will push companies like Mythic Games to actually communicate with people more. Um, because there is always an ability to do that. One of my big things is, is like progress bars, right? I, I think it's very easy to do, even if you're not working on Anastir. Show all the stuff before Anastir, and then just show where you're at on those. So it, the, the focus is still Anastir. The focus is still, hey, you backed Anastir, this is where we're at. We're doing this first, and then we'll get to it. At least then people know, and you can update that as progress is made. I, I think that's totally fine. I, I think that's valid. Or if nothing else, hey, we have a new community person. Here's this new person. Let's talk about that. Again, would work great. So there's plenty of ways you can do updates. Um, between now and October, apparently. So hopefully that's what's coming up. But that's what that is. The deactivated just means that um, Kickstarter is trying to push back on them being able to continue to um, gain funds through something like Anastir, even though I believe the pledge manager is actually already closed. Um, because they didn't want that inflating more, which I could understand as well. Um, but anyway, they, they kind of had already closed that. But not all companies have. That being said, I have seen companies that haven't done an update in years and I haven't seen the deactivated. So it's very interesting to see this on Mythic Games. I'm wondering if people were filing complaints because one of the things it talks about here 
is the fact that they actually like take a look and review reports received from backers when projects do not go as expected. And I'm thinking that's really what pushed it more than them really monitoring the communication of all the campaigns. So in other words, they got reported to the cops and the cops said, hey, hey, knock it off. So <laughs> do better. And I hope they do. So anyway, that's where that's at. Okay, future KOA here again. So look, this is Watchtower Gaming and they have made this no exit. Now, what is no exit? Well, it's a big long box that might sound kind of familiar and it has 40 plus miniatures in it, a lot of anime art and some very interesting concepts. I'm going to be just kind of showing a superficial look right now. We're not going to dive into it really heavily or anything like that. And by the way, there is a link to it down in the description below, of course. But suffice it to say that, as you can see, the art is actually quite good. I think that turned out really, really well. However, there's some oddities here as well. For instance, I think the art on the game tiles looks really, really lackluster, very digital, definitely not something that's very impressive. Hopefully that can be improved some to kind of match the overall aesthetics that you see elsewhere, like with the characters themselves. Also, the miniatures look actually rather plain. What I mean by that is a lot of them, as you can see, are just kind of standing there. Now, they're designed in a cool way, but they're not highly, highly dynamic by any measure, I would say. But this art is incredible. It really, really is. And if we dive into it some... As you can see, they're reusing that even more, and that makes sense. They talk about gothic horror dungeon crawl, okay, so again, something we're definitely interested in. But then they show something like this. Now, I want to take a quick moment just to share that what you see is not what you get. So the problem here is they are showing very nice renders, but they are only digital images and the physical product will not look the same. In fact, they are seemingly not caring at all about the physical thing, the thing that they'll actually charge you for and ship to you, and only designing in some kind of like ethereal concept of we don't understand this is going to be this big and mass produced in China. Or even as a uh, actual like resin piece, this would be difficult and I'll kind of talk why a little bit. But I guess what I'm saying is, is I've just gotten done uh, working with Reggie Games to get their miniatures ready for production to look great as a physical product on your table. There was a lot of things that could have been done early on to prevent a lot of money and a lot of time being spent with the manufacturer afterwards. If they design their miniatures right correctly and now... It'll save them a, a huge amount later on. Definitely beneficial for any developer, you guys watching, make your minis right at the start. Trust me, it's worth it. It'll save you money. You might think it doesn't look quite as good as it could if you pretended it wasn't going to be a physical product, but it'll save you money, I promise. For instance, this tiny little chain here, this chain link with the little uh, gaps in between, her little finger holding it up here, this little trigger on here, uh, you have a little opening right there. All of that is impossible to do physically. This miniature is this big and it's made in plastic. Even as a resin piece, often they'll put a literal metal chain there. That is still hard to do because of the loops here and because of how taut this is. It would just be incredibly hard to do. This is not going to look like this. So when you're looking at images, just know that. Additionally, there's some oddities as well, like the contrast here isn't very good. It's a little bright. It's not the best miniature ever uh, when it comes to a picture. I could put that in Illustrator and make it look a little bit better, up the contrast, up the texture on a little bit, make it look nicer within seconds. So there's some oddities in here as well. I just want to keep that in mind. I'll be covering this, of course. I'll be watching it. It is early on. They can still change a lot. But suffice it to say, I do have a few reservations. Now, talking about Darkest Dungeon here, Mythic Games did write an update, and and there's some interesting bits. First of all, they are we're using Fun Again, but Fun Again has said they're going out of business. They're not doing this anymore. So, what does that mean for Wave Two? Well, they do address that, and they say they were actually going to be using Miniature Market. I've gotten stuff shipped by them a lot. I buy a lot of Vallejo paints through them, um, some like single paints and stuff like that. Very, very good. They do a good job there. Uh, however, as part of this agreement, we have have sold them, Miniature Market, a limited number of copies of the core game, expansions, and accessories from our overstock. So this is another mention about how they have had games made, shipped, but then uh, not given to backers. Instead, these were paid for, 
right? So they they sold them, miniature market them, but they didn't sell them at the same price they're selling us, right? Because miniature market needs to make a profit off these. So they sold them cheaper than us. I'm assuming, uh, and I don't even know what the deal is. Maybe they just paid the like uh, ransom contribution money, whatever you want to call it. $69 or whatever to get it. I'm not sure. However, they did have extra copies made and moved and they're at miniature market now. So FYI, that's coming up. Uh, additionally, additionally, if we scroll down here for next steps, listen to this. The next steps will be wave two and they're currently working on doing all the files and translations, stuff like that. Coming, they will come back to you for the same process as wave one, namely to consult with you and ask for a contribution for this shipment. In the meantime, we will focus on the delivery of another project, Six Siege, for which we will follow the same procedures as for Darkest Dungeon. Now, clarification, if you have already paid the contribution money, that was for both waves. You don't have to pay again. If you have not, though, then to get wave two, you'll have to pay for both, essentially, is what I'm assuming. I'm assuming they'll still ship wave one because they've already made it, technically. So you'll have to pay now both to get wave two. You can't, like, just get wave two. That is my assumption. There's still some questions around that. But suffice it to say, you're, you're, you ain't getting it for free. If you haven't paid yet, you're still going to have to pay. Addition, and for free, I mean, more, you know, for no more than what you've already paid for. <laughs> Important to note. But listen to this, Six Siege for which we will follow the same procedure as for Darkest Dungeon. So if you backed Six, Six Siege, in other words, if you're like me and you backed a whole bunch of these games, prepare to pay for that contribution money over and over and over again. They are going to be asking for money for Six Siege, so that's an announcement there for you. Additionally, additionally, they comment that they're going to be doing this for every project before the COVID crisis and Ukrainian war. Now, one thing I want to point out is I feel that this is a scapegoating. They still have this thing where they say stuff like, we couldn't have done it without you. They still have this like thankfulness to their tone now that they haven't always had, but they don't have any ownership of the actual issue. So obviously COVID and the Ukrainian war happened, but they weren't able to survive that because of their business practice, because of their decisions, because of how they ran their business. And they need to start taking ownership of their fault in that. In other words, hey, we goofed, we're at fault, we couldn't do this without you. I would caution them from continuing to make comments about something like the COVID crisis and Ukrainian war when that was not the only issue. The entire industry dealt with that. Mythic Games is not in a unique position, but they are in the minority in the fact that they could not survive that, and that's because of how they ran their business. Now, Good and bad, right? I mean, part of it is that they, you know, only had people in France and so expensive employees. They didn't, they weren't like, come on, having a Brazilian team or Dimension Games having a Chinese team or something like that. So their costs were higher, but that's a decision point to make. And either way, it's your decision point to make. Right now, there are tech companies firing thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And the least that they can do, which they often do do, is say, hey, do do, ha. <laughs> Uh, hey, we're at fault. We messed up. Granted, at the time it made sense, but at the, at the end of the day, this is us. They need to be more like that. Also, they're saying this whole doing refunds. That being said, if you refunded it not early enough, uh, yeah, good luck. <laughs> okay, let's talk about Subterra 2 real quick. This is interesting. It says a joint statement about the Subterra release. It says joint statement, but it's really a statement uh, not having anything to do with inside the box. This is not by them. As you can see, it's done by Pin here, or Tim here, a collaborator. I don't know why I said, oh, his last name, Pinder. Okay. So you can think of them as power backers with thousands of copies at risk each. They were essentially the publishers, okay? So they uh, also are on the line, don't have the product, and have thousands of dollars out of their pockets right now. ITB has posted two apologetic updates in the last month, but they did not contain much information. So here are some facts that we can share from our side. And by the way, their last two updates were like from July and I believe August of last year, and they are for backer only. So I haven't even seen them, but I'm sure they're full of a whole bunch of garbage. Okay, so language editions, okay for release. Spanish, French, German, okay? English edition. While we do not have any official confirmation or further information on the English edition, we assume that most of the Kickstarter retail volume is produced. I wouldn't assume that. Hopefully the molds being paid for by the French and German publishers helps ITB to pay the outstanding amount. If you back to the English version, good freaking luck. That's all I'm hearing here. I understand that they're actually trying to be a little positive. I get that. But I also try to be a little realistic here, okay? Um, if it hasn't happened yet, 
uh, it probably won't. And it sounds like ITB could care less about updating you people on it anyway. So what the heck do they care? Otherwise, they would maybe even contact you once a month. But no, they won't even do that. Okay, moving on. I do have an ask here. This is a Spontaneous Brain Awareness Board Game Publishers. I'm not going to tell you who sent this to me because that would uh, change, you know, how, how you... Uh, fill this out but link down below will be the first link you see down there actually after all those amazing sponsors of the channel um to actually just quickly fill this out it's just hey write down some board game companies that's all you got to do it helps out them a lot it helps me out a lot too i can actually look at this information and it'll let me know what you guys are interested in so i'm not asking for like a comment for the algorithm or anything like that just click this link Submit your answers, you're done, that's it. It'll help them out a lot, it'll help me out a lot, and at the end of the day, it's just good information to know. If I can, I'll even share the information out with you guys, and that'd be kind of interesting, so feel free to check that out alone. And with that, now, now, future me signing off. Guys, take care.